So I need I need to know uh, I need to know how basic I need to dig down for this uh, assignment. Or do I have to start at the beginning and just re and give a five introdu minute introduction about the way this class works? It's fine if I have to do that. Cool. 65% survival. Okay. All right, so for those of you who don't know, I am Professor Andrew Rosen. I am the instructor for uh, for for this uh, section of the course. I'm also the course coordinator for this course. It's a flipped classroom, meaning uh, that you are expected to watch the lecture videos for the week before showing up the uh, before showing up the class. Fortunately, this week is review on polymorphism. Next week's videos are going to be over array list, so you want to watch the array list videos over the weekend if you get the chance. I know this this has been a bit crazy and hectic. Um, the class does essentially work, uh, does eventually split up, uh, split off into kind of a work at your own pace after like week five or so, but, uh, uh, but, um, that, but it, for the most part, we want to make sure the first five weeks of this class, I would say are probably the hardest, which is good because after five weeks is when people start getting bogged down with all the other classes. Um, the reason I say that is that linked lists are the biggest conceptual leap for uh, students to have to deal with in this class. Um, so my goal is to get you over to that point for linked lists. Um, but in general, uh, what you want to do is you'll want to watch the video. Uh, watch the videos. If you haven't watched the video in the announcement yet, uh, make sure you do that after class. Um, I have two videos up, one that goes over the syllabus and this kind of information, and another one that goes over um, uh, the um, this first assignment, Fox and Rabbit. Now, the goal here for Fox and Rabbit, and let me share my screen. Let's see. Sorry, let me delete that and delete that so that we have a nice clean canvas to work with. So apologies in advance if this is a uh, ultra wide. If this is this this is not great for your computer because I'm working on an ultra wide screen. Okay. So the goal of this is to get our rabbit to survive as much as possible. Um, we do this by again we have this greater program that we can run, and the rabbit survives for however long he does. Um, your grade is is based off of the square is a square root is a square root curved, meaning that we take the square root of your survival rate to, and then multiply by ten. So one percent survival rate gets you ten points out of out of a out of hundred uh, ten points out of hundred, and your full final grade is gets twenty added to it for however many out of one hundred and twenty, just to give it a bit less of an impact for not having a full full one hundred on it. Um. There really isn't a way to get a full 100. I've seen 98 or 99, but for the most part, I expect people to get a 90% survival rate for this program. Um, so um, his, so, so let's go. So anyway, the rule is, is that you can modify this program however you, however you want. The other stuff you can't modify, but we can sure look at it. Now, a common mistake we see with students is that is that they'll take a look at the Fox code. All right. So the way the moves um, are happen is that you have the decide move function that tells, uh, and that tells the the and that tells the program how the program is going to act, how this is going to move. Okay. And the uh and all animals have that decide move if it's an invalid move then it just stays put by default i'm just saying for the animal to stay still fox has its own completed code to figure that out now the co most common mistake that we get as i was saying is that people will take a look at this code and just kind of reverse it make it look for the fox instead of the rabbit and then run away but that's not necessarily uh you know good behavior um you know, the, because this is a this is a this is a 
predator, it's got to look for its food and the prey animal can just kind of stay put and chew on grass, so to speak. Um, all right. Now, this now it may look a bit overwhelming with all these classes going on. So let me go ahead and just kind of condense this down for you. The way this works is is that this program is a classical uh, is a is working under the classic GUI model. So if I run Rabbit Hunt, which is our main, which is our driver, the program is organized into basically three parts: model, view, and controller. So here's our GUI, and then we have, and then the GUI is is handled by having three parts. This is kind of a classical way of doing stuff that you may not have gone over. So, but this is like when we teach GUI, we typically teach it in this fashion. So. First off, we have the model. And the model is the reason we can run this program. The model is the reason we can run the grader and we don't need any graphics. The model is the internal logic of the game. It's the internal logic of how this works. It has nothing to do with the graphics other than providing the information to the graphic about what needs to be drawn, like the state of the board. It, 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 makes, it keeps the internal state of everything. So the animal, so the model class is obviously part of the model, but so is the animal, the bush, the fox, and the rabbit. Those are those are basically our model. These are the internal logic that we have. Next, you have the view, which again, if we run our rabbit hunt class, Um, the view is everything we see inside the window, the game that's being played, right? We see all this. This is our view. This is our view. Okay. So that's our view. This is what's getting shown. You don't have to worry about any of the code in the view. That's just kind of going to display how that works. And finally, we have the controller. The controller represents all of these parts. It can it 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 is this stuff at the bottom. It is the things that you can click on. Those are our controllers. So when you design a graphic program, which you do not need to do for this class, but when you do so in the future, this is kind of the model you want to use. Model view controller. It's a very good kind of way. So where do we want you to be right now? Okay. Where do I want you to be um uh right now? in the next kind of uh, 20 minutes for this, okay? Um, so if, actually, let me ask if there's people who haven't, how many people haven't gotten to this point yet? So what we wanna do is that we've got the fox going, okay? And now it's moving straight towards the rabbit. And what we wanna do is that on the rabbit's turn, rather than staying still, I want him to move directly away from the fox. Are there people who haven't gotten to that point yet? Yes or no? Or are there people who haven't even started because today has been because this week has been a complete and utter mess? No worries. Today hasn't all right. So okay. So people haven't even started. I I, I get that. All right. Yeah, that was why the entire point of the lab yesterday was to make sure that you could have time to start this. Um so let's go, but that's okay. I can adjust things accordingly, um, but only so much. So, but for here, th we definitely want to get you th get you coding. This entire the point entire point of the exercise is to get all that uh, rust off after uh, the the break. So yeah. So here. Is the code so I want you to work in this? So I want you to basically focus on two files right now. Fox and his decide move function kind of look at, at, at how it works, and then we have our rabbit class. Right now, your rabbit should stay something along the lines of of return random. Okay, it should probably say something like return random, and then min min and ma max. Go ahead and replace that with model.stay. Model is this useful class here that you can look at later, but it has a bunch of useful functions. You can look at all them, all them, but all that we care about 
but you'll see the ones that we care about in Fox. It has stuff like North, South, East, West definitions. It has uh, all these enumerated numbers, uh, enumerated types, edges, fox, rabbit, bush, that basically say, okay, we're going to just have a code for the, you know, we're going to have these numerical codes rep uh, to correspond to what I'm actually looking at. All stuff that you don't have to worry about. Let's look at the fox code and see how he works. Okay, that will give us a good idea of maybe of how to write our rabbit. Okay. So, int the side move. So we've got these basically three blocks of commented code. One that says, look all around for the rabbit. If the rabbit has been seen recently, move towards its last known position. And you can see that that's folded up. And then finally, I've got this other one that says, um, whoops, I wanted to fold up the other bit. I wanted to fold up this, but I guess not. Okay. So and this one says, if I haven't seen the rabbit or lost track of the rabbit, continue in the current direction, maybe dodging bushes. So I'll go into that in just a second. So over here we have, um, can, so over here we have this first part, look around for the rabbit. And it ha, it sets a variable to say, can see rabbit now false. Can I see the rabbit now? Well, I just started my turn, so I have no idea if I can see the rabbit now. For in I, from model min direction to model max direction. That's just simply a fancy way of saying from zero to eight to, uh, to seven inclusive. Um, don't forget this to make this less than or equal to. By the way, my you'll, you'll notice my font is a bit funky. I'm sorry about this. I love the way it works for my font. If you don't like this for your font, don't use it. Um, it, it exploits ligatures uh, features in that are built into fonts to basically say, okay, if I've got a less than sign, an equal sign, and they're together, they kind of merge into a two character wide, less than or equal to sign. Same thing for this big fat equal sign. It's just something I like. Not everybody likes it. Um, I like it. Uh, people are very opinionated about it. Um, so anyway, so what does this for loop does? It says for each of the directions from north, which is zero to, uh, and then going clockwise in a circle to north, uh, to northwest. I'm going to call the look function, which does exactly what you'd think it would do. But let's go ahead and confirm that it does what I do. In most IDEs, like IntelliJ, if you hold Control or Command, depending on whether you're on a Windows or Mac, respectively, notice it becomes highlighted, like a hyperlink that you can click. So let's click it. And it opens it up. It's a wonderful feature about, uh, about these IDEs. So all I did was hold control on Windows and click on it. It's command on Mac. Finds the first visible thing in that given direction, starting from this animal's current position. And then takes in what the direction is and returns the object that's been seen. So here it's saying, okay, I'm going to look in this direction. And if I see a rabbit, then I set the information about seeing the rabbit now and oh, I have seen the rabbit equal to true. I save the direction the rabbit's in and I get the distance to the rabbit. Distance gives you, and let's just go over what distance does. Distance says, let's go and get the first visible thing in this direction. Now, just so you don't get, get so panicked, um, my plan for this is that we're going to go through this. We're going to go and um, I'm going to give you about 10, 15 minutes to try to uh, reverse engineer the uh, uh, some code to get the rabbit running away, and then I'll give you that part, and then continue, and then lead you to a correct answer. We're just gonna kind of speed run our way through it simply because of the uh, because of the way class is going. Got it? Just we would normally have extra time. We don't have that extra time because of the snow. It's unfortunate, but hey. On the bright side, since I'm at home, I've got plenty of time to stick around after class. So if you need that, I'm, I'll be here. So anyway, it look model rabbit. We've seen the rabbit. Great. So this um code, when we run it, when we hit the step over here, and this red guy is the is the fox, and if you see those lasers shooting out when he when we hit step. That's actually the look, that's a visual representation of the look function. And so he says, aha, I found the rabbit. And so the next block of the code is, is taking effect. If the rabbit has been seen, not necessarily this time, move towards the, not, the last known position. 
If I have seen a rabbit, return direction to the rabbit. You return the direction you want to move. Otherwise, if I, and so this is if the distance to the rabbit is greater than zero, then move towards the rabbit. Otherwise, if I'm where the where I saw the rabbit and I can't see him, I've lost the rabbit, and now I choose a random direction to keep to go in. Okay. Okay. Next, <clears throat> let's go ahead and finally finish this part. Either I haven't seen the rabbit or I lost track of the rabbit. So continue with the current direction, maybe dodging bushes. And so this code will be uh, will be good for the final part, the if else blocks that we need later, which are if I can move in a direction, then move in that direction. So can move is another animal function, which just simply returns true or false. Can I move in this direction? Why couldn't I move in that direction? Because maybe I'm at the edge of the screen or there's a bush in the way. I can't move through bushes. Okay, so if I can move in that direction, great. If I can, otherwise, if I can't move in that direction, if I can move, and this one's a bit of a chunky uh, statement, but don't worry about that. It says, if I can move in this direction, do that. And I can move in this direction, do that. So let's go ahead and, and look at this from the inside out. So model.turn, current direction, and one. Okay? Model.turn, current direction, and one. What does that mean? Wait a second. Got stuff going on uh, downstairs that I want to block out. So there we go. So model.turn is probably is the function that will reduce the amount of work for you. Note that there is no north, south, east, west being used in this code. All direction is relative. Um, if you had to say, oh, if the rabbit, if the bot. If the rabbit is south, go south. If the rabbit is north, go north. That would just be very, um, that would be very frustrating, right? So instead we use model.turn. What does model.turn do? It says, given a direction and a number of times to make a one eighth turn clockwise, in other words, a 45 degree turn clockwise, give the resultant direction. So it gives you, so in other words, consider I to be, so over here, sorry, consider con current direction to be straight ahead, okay? See if, so just consider it straight ahead. If I can't move straight, if I can move straight ahead, great, move that direction. Else, if I can't move straight ahead, I'm going to move, so again, if, here's our fox. And if I can't move straight ahead, if I can't move straight ahead, I want to move this direction, which is current direction. This is current. Okay, I'm just going to write curve for there. That's current direction. And current direction and one would give me this. Why? Because current direction and one is... Um, I'm sorry, it is 45 is a 45 degree turn. So here's current direction, here's current direction one, here's current direction in two, current direction in three, and then current direction in four would be behind me. And then you can, it also accepts negative numbers. So this would be either, this is both seven or negative one. Okay, sorry about my terrible handwriting. I'm just trying to do this on a mouse and the mouse I'm using is not exactly, is a weird one to begin with, so. Um, let's go ahead, annotations, great. They're all drawings, there we go. So if I can move forward into the right, so this is effectively saying if I can move forward to the right, do so. If I can move forward into the left, do so. In other words, if there's a bush in the way, I'm gonna try to go around it. And if I can't go around it, I'm just going to choose a random direction. That's all that does. Okay. And then if it's somehow stuck, oh, well, I, I, I guess it's a free win for the rabbit. So the rabbit, what should you do right now? So first off, we what can we take from the... Uh, so... From this rabbit, from this rabbit function, what can, sorry, from this fox function, what can we take and what do we want to use? So first off, you want to use this for loop. 
or specifically line 40 over here from our code in this for loop. The for in i is equal to min direction, i is less than model dot max direction. That's one you want to use. And then you want part of this if statement, except you want to modify it to, if I look in a direction and I see the fox. So what do I, so now let's go ahead and take our, our rabbit code and modify and take maybe 10 minutes to try to, mo to grab this. Okay, we're gonna grab this. We don't need any of these variables. And we wanna change this to, if I see the fox, run directly away from the fox, okay? So let's take about five, seven minutes to do that, five to 10 minutes to do that. And then um, if you, uh, and then we'll meet back and I'll show you how to do that. Sound good? And I apologize that I'm like just jumping into this with no introduction whatsoever to like the class content or whatnot. I, I just want to make us, I want to get you jump started on this. I, I assume I'll have a, a chance for a more formal introduction on Monday. Or when, and especially when I get the chance to actually walk around the room and, and meet with all of you in person. So, all right. So I'll leave this up. I'm going to go see what's going on downstairs. My, do my dog is barking up a storm. All right, so if I'm going to, so everything seems to have resolved itself downstairs. Um, if there's a, some of you who are like completely lost, I'm gonna create some breakout rooms. Um, if you're completely lost, message me and join one of the breakout rooms and I'll join one of them with you, okay? And by message me, I mean just like direct message me in the chat, or or you can say hey, or you can just broadcast if you want. Okay. Person who just DM'd me, join me in room four. Okay. I'm going to drop what I dropped uh, because I have to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to drop what I'm going to drop in chat. Okay. Or I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop what I have on my screen in chat.
for a few more minutes and like two more minutes and then i will show you how how to manipulate the rabbit and how and kind of how we can get him moving around the board even though it's not going to be a very good survival strategy at the moment And also, I am dropping in chat the video that I posted uh, that um, I'm going to post the video that I sent out in the announcement earlier from um, on that goes over this program. One second. All right, let's go back to sharing my screen. So, all right. And let's go ahead and just kind of discuss again, what is the objective here? The objective of this homework assignment is to get the rabbit to survive as much as possible. And what we're about to do is not a good survival strategy because as we'll see, it's not gonna last very long. But the entire point here is to learn how to manipulate the rabbit so that we can have a good survival strategy. Again, I apologize jumping right into this. If you need, I, I am recording this. And if you need a, a, uh, a much bigger refresher on this, um, I, I posted the video in chat. Okay. So what the way we can manipulate this rabbit to move directly away from the fox is first thing we, is we want to take this for loop that looks for the fox and say, okay, if I see the fox, Okay, if look i is equal to model dot fox, if I see that will let me say if I see the fox do something. Now, if we now we could do something like this, return i just kind of to experiment around with it. This is not a good solution, um, but it lets us at least move, uh, at least interact with the program now. Okay. And what that says is basically, and now if we move, we can see that our 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 rabbit is going. And now the rabbit sees him, and then it says, and now let me go ahead and make and blow this up to make it bigger. The rabbit sees the fox at direction I, and he moves in direction I. The rat the fox sees the rabbit in direction I, in his direction I, and moves at direction I. So each of their them direction I is the direction I happen to see the thing I'm looking for in. Now, obviously, this is not a good survival strategy in the slightest because they're just topping towards each other and om nom 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 nom, the rabbit is eaten. So um, instead, what we want to do is maybe move in a different direction. So that's where our friend model.turn comes into, the one I pointed out earlier. So what we can do is we can say, Instead of returning direction I, what I was hinting at, if we want to move directly away from the fox, we say model dot turn and say direction I is that direction I'm seeing the fox in. And now if I say model dot turn four, I'm moving directly away from the fox. Makes sense to everybody? Now we'll see that this doesn't really raise our survival rate much at all. Um, mainly because I move away and then I hit a wall and then the fox eats me. Uh, I survived for 16 turns. That was better than 12. Um, whoops, wrong button. Yeah. So again, wrong thing to share. Let's just go ahead and share that. 
Yes. So, but that's where, but now we can, but this is the important bit I wanted to show you. You can take a direction and get a direction relative to it. Make sense, everybody? So now, how do we win? Like somebody was saying they get a 65% chance. I should, I want to see, ideally what I should be seeing is an 87% survival rate or higher. Okay, and how do we do that? Well, there's two strategies. I'm going to go over the hard one and then I'm going to tell you about the easy one. Um, the hard strategy is what we refer to in MMORPGs or net games as kiting. Uh, K-I-T-I-N-G, kiting an enemy. Now, in an MMORPG, this refers to a tactic where rather than trying to engage with a dangerous monster and just try to fight it and, and you know, hope it doesn't beat you before it beats it, instead, with kiting, what happens is that you get one player who goes and says, look at me, I'm dangerous. Uh, come and chase me, monster. I look tasty. And then runs away from the monster. Well, everybody else either is uh, tries to heal the person running away, performing the kiting strategy, and other people uh, hit uh, hit that monster with poison or other damage over time spells to basically wear that monster down over time. This is analogous because we run at the same speed as this fox. The rabbit runs at the same speed as the fox, so there's no reason why the rabbit shouldn't be able to, you know just run away from the fox and just run out the timer because they run at the same speed. Now, I worked on this strategy for about three hours when I first uh, tried this program. And I uh, and then I and I got to a 40 percent survival rate before I realized my code uh, resembled a horrible mess of spaghetti. And um, and I was not really going to be easily able to crank that up. I've had students in the past who've managed to do this. And what they do is that they um, is that they get a good strat, they get a good survival rate by getting their rabbit next to a bush. And then they, and then when the fox sees them, they just basically rotate around the bush in an infinite loop once the fox is locked in onto them. And, and they run out the timer that way. Um, that's a bit difficult to do, but it works. Um, it's highly satisfying when it works, but it's a bit difficult. On the other hand, um, and that is, you know, just simply one way to look at it. The other way that is very useful, especially if you're a computer scientist, is to look at the rules of the game and then try to exploit them. This is a very useful mindset set if you're going into kind of any kind of hacking kind of uh, or a uh, mindset or problem solving mindset, which is look at the rules of a game and exploit the rules of the game. Um. Look at how the, and namely, we need to look at how this these rules match up to reality. In reality, right, fox and rabbits, you know, they see each other and they bolt and, and stuff. Um, but in our simulation, we're simulating something. We're, we're not actually dealing with real foxes and rabbits. We're dealing with programs running over specific rules. And that rule is, is that, well, look at the way the lay, that, that his eyes are, that these guys are looking in directions. That's not the way things look in real life. These guys are looking in straight. Well, assuming I can draw straight stuff, these guys are looking in straight lines. Okay, let me go ahead and change color and draw it for the fox. Okay, draw, where is the color? There it is. Okay, there we go. There it is for the fox. So those are the directions the fox is going to look, right? Or here's some of the directions that the fox is going to look. Change color one more time. Hot pink. That sounds great. I'm going to go ahead and instead, I'm just going to draw giant rectangles. Look at this. Pay, pay attention to the space in, the, in, in between those lines. These are blind spots in division, 
right? Because these things can only look in straight lines, right? And I do mean straight. You have to be in the same row or column or diagonal in order to see something else. So if you're not in this line, so you could, so ostensibly, you know, our rabbit could be right here in this, in this space right over here and the fox wouldn't see him. That close up and the fox couldn't see him because he's in the blind spot. Or I could be over here. Fox wouldn't be able to see me. Or over here. Or over here. Okay. Makes sense so far? So that's, that's kind of ex exploit number one. And when we combine this with exploit number two, we are gonna, this we, we get the inkling of our strategy, which is the fox goes, and then the rabbit goes, or the rabbit goes and then the fox goes. It doesn't really matter who, we, it doesn't really matter. Let me go ahead and reset to a random board just so we can see this. The rabbit goes, the fox goes. They are asynchronous turns, meaning that we take one, meaning that they make their, dis is that the fox moves and then the rabbit moves. The fox moves and then the rabbit moves, all right? So ostensibly what could happen, and let's see what happens here. Perfect. Fox, rabbit goes, fox goes. Okay, the fox just moved into the line of sight of the rabbit. Okay, so now it's about to be the rabbit's turn and the rabbit's about to see the fox and react to that. Okay. And now the code I had said move directly away from it. Okay. But now it's the fox's turn. And so the fox is going to look around and see that rabbit and then move directly toward him. So what would have a better move been? A better move would have been rather than running, rather than running, directly away, okay? Rather than moving directly away, let's, oh, right, I can hit the replay button. So step, 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 step. So the better move for the rabbit over here, instead of looking directly at this fox and moving in this direction, the better move would have been him moving this direction or this direction, right? It would have been better to move away from that fox or in this direction, right? It would have been better to move either perpendicular to the fox or back and away, depending on how you want to put it. And then the fox would have just kept on moving in this direction this direction over here, and had never seen the rabbit in the first place. So this strategy over here, just by itself, takes about 10 lines of code, 10 to 15 lines of code, depending on how you type it, and gets around an 87% uh, survival rate. And basically the way it works is we say, okay, if I look around and I see the fox in direction I, look around and I see the fox in direction I over here. In that case, I ask myself, so where are my directions here? Well, this is I and zero. This is one, this is two. This is three, this is four, this is five, this is six, and this is seven, according to model.turn, right? Model.turn says, let's make a 45 degree turn relative to direction I. So um, model, if so, I so let's look at the options here. Model.turn zero is a terrible move. That's just, 
That's just running straight to the fox. That is a terrible move. Model dot turn four. Also not a great move because you're still in the line of sight of the fox. The fox then gets to see you and eat you. All the others are actually not that bad of a choice. One and seven are a bit risky because you're getting closer to the fox. So if we were like over here, that would probably be not a great move. Or sorry, one and seven were not would not be a good, not one and five. But two and six, three and five seem to be like winners over here. So let's go ahead and actually test that out um, with, with, with this code. Let's go ahead and test that out actually. So rather than turning, and we can just test it out by just changing this number. Instead of four, let's change it to five. Rather than away, we're gonna look back and away. And we're gonna see something magical happen, hopefully, hopefully. It all depends on the on the format and because the strategy isn't that full yet. Okay, yeah, that 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 didn't that one was a death for this one, but that's okay. The odds aren't exactly in my favor, but they do work. The rabbit wins. Rabbit wins again. Let's go ahead and actually, um, and, and rather than doing it ourselves and just watching this, let's go ahead and watch the and watch this. And uh, instead of watching it, we can run the grader and we can actually see we are actually going to get a 37% survival rate when we try it around 300 times. That's not bad. Now, where are we losing? Well, we're only ever trying one direction to move in, right? We're only ever trying one direction to move in for this, for this rabbit. Okay? We're only ever trying this direction. So we should probably try more than one direction. Where have we seen that before? Trying more than one direction to move. We've seen that over here in this block, this else if block. Ah, there's a model that turned there. So we can ask if we can move in this direction, this escape vector, let's take this escape vector. Otherwise, let's try this other escape vector. So a couple of points to note about this is that we've got We've identified four directions that are very good to move in. Five, three, six, and two. The order in which you do them makes a huge difference to the score. Five and three, they seem like they're, you know, that's back into the left, back into the right. Those are mere images of each other. So you'd think it doesn't matter whether you do five and three first. It does matter which you do first. Experiment. Because the fox has a bias in terms of which directions he goes first. He has a bias over here in terms of when he can't see the fox of the rabbit and he gets stuck, how does he move? He has a bias. So what direction you choose actually does play into, um, into this. Now, how do you, and this will, and if doing this in, uh, you know, in the right order, will get you somewhere around an 87, 85, 87, 92% survival rate. So how do you get above that? Well, beyond that, there's going to be issues with getting caught in corners or the fox is kind of landing right on top of you and that kind of stuff. Um, and so the issue there is making sure you have enough space to maneuver. So you die because you don't have enough space to maneuver. So the other strategy then becomes, okay, if I don't see the fox, then maybe make sure I have enough space to maneuver. But Part of what you want to make sure is that you don't have to run away from the fox because the strategy relies off of you staying still and moving out of the line of sight. So moving as little as possible, and if you move, that may, that's a risk that can create a risk. So it's about so later on it becomes about balancing that risk. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is that I've explained as much as I can in a recording that's going to be helpful for the entire class. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up these breakout rooms. I'm going to make more of them. Okay. 
close all rooms. I'm going to uh, add a few rooms. And I will go through these rooms in numerical order. Uh, there's 10 of them. There's 10 breakout rooms. Move to whatever you want you want. You want. I'm going to go to room one first, room two, room three. And I'm going to go and try and I'm going to ask each person in the room how I can help you. Okay. Get, get the chance to work with you. This is going to simulate me going around the room the best. Normally, I won't be droning on for 50 minutes. But again, I had to kind of catch you up to where we were. Um, if you're kind of confused as to how this class works, watch the syllabus video. I explain what we have. The main questions to answer are is that um is that we is you'll need to demo this. I'll go over that on Monday. In other words, just in order to turn this in and get credit for it, you got to show me your work uh in class or your TA in lab. And the second thing is, is that our exam is on um, week six, and that will be in the lab period. You'll get more information about that, but you don't have an exam until in uh for you don't have to worry about if exams until you're done with linked lists. And linked lists are the big are the big thing, and that come, and that's week four. Okay. So join up the whatever breakout room you want. I will go to those breakout rooms. Um, and then I will try and I will do my and I will stay on and as long as I need as I as I need to. As long as there's people here, even if class is over, I will keep meeting with people. Even if class is over, I will meet with people. Okay. And if you have to go, you have to go. I get it. Because, you know, of course, this class only lasts until 10, uh, 1220. But the wonders of being at home and online is that I've got plenty of time. Okay. So I'll open all the rooms. 